every few days, it's a rotating carousel of the same topics, just sort of intertwined in a different way. This is an article on New York Islanders Hockey Now, or excuse me, NYI Hockey Now. Let's see, I have to go out there and type it because there's two New York teams. It's kind of difficult to go out there and do it properly. The article was published by Stefan Rosner from yesterday, and it talks about how the Islanders and the Canucks are talking Horvat, as well as a potential trade package. We've discussed the idea of a Bo Horvat trade to a few teams already. We've talked about the Columbus Blue Jackets. We have talked about... Oh boy, who else have we talked about? No other team has come into mind because my mind is completely blank. But the Islanders are indeed a team that have apparently showed interest when you consider what is said in this article right here on NYI Hockey Now. A link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read everything that is said here in this piece. Take a look at the latest scoop on the situation as per NYI Hockey Now. While many teams will call Canucks GM Patrick Alvin regarding Horvat, NYI Hockey Now has learned that the Islanders have indeed checked in on the 27-year-old. It's worth noting the Canucks also had a scout at the New York Islanders Tuesday night game against the Boston Bruins, one of 13 scouts in attendance. Bo has 20 goals and 9 assists, make that 21 goals and 9 assists in 29 games this season, and is set to becoming a UFA, yada yada yada, it's the same stuff that we've heard all this time. Now the Islanders are in a pretty interesting spot, because they did not add their point producer, they did not add their goal scorer. This was a big thing in the offseason, how Lou Lamorello pretty much refused to go out there and add this type of a player. Everybody was clamoring about the Islanders and their lack of success last year and how they needed to add a goal score. Lou, what are you doing not adding a goal score? How could you not add a goal score? No Tarasenko, no Johnny Gaudreau, no Matthew Kachuk. They just went out there and cruised by on cruise control, not getting their score. But in my opinion, it's been kind of okay because this team is doing pretty well in the standings right now. It's just, hey, that need for a goal scorer still sort of exists. And if you wanted to go out there and add somebody like that now, you probably would be doing your team a very good service in doing so. We've discussed some of the other names that have been thrown around there. Brock Besser has been a potential link to the Islanders as well. But Bo Horvat is a goal scorer through and through. And his statistical profile from this season definitely goes out there and articulates that. The guy has 30 points in 29 games played on pace for 84 points, and he is still on pace for 59 goals on the season as well. Interesting to note, he has 21 goals in only 29 games played, which is nuts because this 21 goal marker already bests, what is that, 1, 2, 3, for five seasons he has had in the past as a member of the Vancouver Canucks, and he's only done so in 29 games played. It's kind of wild just how Bo has gotten to this point, but either way, he's scoring goals, the Islanders need a goal scorer, you can see why there's a link here now, can't you? Let's go over what else the article says here. Despite the Islanders already having four centers rostered, the need for scoring is the priority. The way Horvat plays the game and the way he leads makes him a clear fit on the island. He has the energy like a Casey Sezikis and the tenacity of a Zach Parise, but also has a scoring touch that right now would have him leading the Islanders in goals by six. And so when it comes to the trade cost, Islanders' top prospect, center Minatu Ratu, holds significant value in the trade market. Ratu, being a two-way center, could be intriguing for Canucks GM Patrick Alvin, especially when he is trading a center too. Also, if they're trading Horvat, it means that they're likely going into a complete rebuild, and Ratu would not be a bad piece to help get a turnaround started. But the Islanders have a few other defensive prospects that could get the job done too. Bull Duke, 2023 first round pick, Callie Odelius. There are a few names that definitely do bring themselves up. Now, we actually have made a video about Samuel Bull Duke already, talking about how he's sort of like in that Victor Hedman esque kind of mold. Now, sure, he's not going to be Victor Hedman, second overall caliber defenseman drafted in 2009, but Bull Duke is really freaking good. 
Not to mention Atiratu, whom we've already discussed as a potential sleeper draft pick from the 2021 NHL entry draft. If you hadn't seen the video we had made about Patrick Kane, then hey, Atiratu was supposed to be the first overall guy in 2021, but his draft season was an absolute disaster. The guy got cut from the World Junior team, he wasn't producing, he wasn't developing properly, it was really bad, and as a result, he slipped all the way to the second round, where the Islanders took him, even though he was supposed to be first overall. I will never get over the story of Atiratu until that guy makes the NHL and has an impact on that league, but Atiratu is a 52nd overall pick that is doing pretty well in the AHL right now. Last season, he was a point per game in the Finnish Liga. Very nice. This season, he's half a point a game with the Bridgeport Islanders. Also pretty nice for a guy who's 20 years old. I still do think that Atiratu has a very good top six ceiling, if not a first line ceiling, in that two-way center, very nice playmaker sort of mold that if he pans out to what he could be, I would rather have a prime version of Atiratu than a prime version of what Bo Horvat is right now. And a lot of that has to do with Prime. No, not the Logan Paul sports drink, but the Prime that Bo Horvat is in right now. He's a goal scorer, and he's a really good one at that. But my goodness, did I not expect Bo Horvat to get 21 goals in only 29 games this season. Bo Horvat getting that amount of production is ridiculous, and it's not sustainable in the slightest. Bo is going to decline. He is going to get paid like a guy who's supposed to be able to score 21 goals in 29 games every single season. But the fact is, he's just not that. Bo heading into this season was always known as a face-off winning center with some really good leadership abilities who could skate in stride really well and who was good at protecting the puck. He was never really known as this goal scorer, and so him pricing himself out in Vancouver is really just setting the Canucks up for getting a good package, and if it is a guy like Atu Ratu going back the other way, then I would be pretty happy with that. If you get yourselves a first-round pick and a guy like Samuel Bolduc too, then I would really like that. Bolduc has 20 points in 25 games played for the Bridgeport Islanders right now. He's on pace for 58 points in 72 games, and this guy's a 6'4", left-handed, 22-year-old defenseman. You talk about guys that could become bona fide top four bets, Bull Duke could potentially be that, and the guy would already be one of the better prospects the Canucks would have on their own defense core, because their own defense prospect system is not all too deep. Now, there are a few other names. Callie Odilius is another Islanders prospect that has been playing really well this season. If the Canucks can get him, that would be a pretty nice bet. But overall, I mean, there's a lot of fodder here for the Islanders and their youth that I'm very intrigued about this Bo Horvat to Long Island sort of deal and whether or not this could be the potential destination, whether or not this could give the Canucks whatever futures they could use to really help themselves out because their future core right now kind of sucks. Their updated trade package actually has Bull Duke, Cali Odelius, and a 2023 first in exchange for Bo Horvat. So, no Atiratu, but if you get two really good defense prospects in Odelius and Bull Duke, that's pretty good. I mean, that really helps out the Canucks in more ways than one, especially since Cali Odelius is only 18 years old. That guy's been playing really well in the Allsvenskan so far in 2022-2023. The rest of the article goes over the lineup, it talks about how Bo could play on the second line with Anders Lee and Anthony Bavillier, but either way, if the Islanders want to compete for a Stanley Cup, there's no question a forward needs to be brought in. Bo and his tools could be an addition that not only helps them get back in the postseason after a lackluster 21-22, but be a key player for the team that can help the organization get back to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time since 84. So talk to the comments about your thoughts about the idea of Bo heading over to the Islanders system. Last time we had made a video discussing Atu Ratu, we had some Islanders fans in the comments saying that Ratu was kind of off limits and that he shouldn't be traded for anybody, so I'm kind of intrigued as to the response for this kind of a trade. Patrick Kane is a lot older than Bo Horvat is, but Bo is also on an expiring deal, so is there somewhat of a parallel in terms of the feelings Islanders fans have towards this sort of idea? And if it's not Aturatu, instead it's Odelius and Bull Duke, does that make you feel a little bit better? Would you want to do that instead? For Vancouver fans, talk to the comments on your thoughts whether or not this sort of a trade return is sufficient. A 2023 first, Cali Odelius, Samuel Bull Duke, 
Or if you want an Atu Ratu instead, I know for me personally, I kind of like Ratu a lot, so I would like to see him come over to Vancouver. Talk about a potential first overall pick, eh? That's a guy that could have been there if you just asked me like two, three years ago. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below about Bo Horvat to the Islanders. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99. And bye.